So you can see I have this beautiful brassica patch behind me and uh, I'm not here to talk about brassicas or food plots today but I just want to kind of show it off because I'm kind of proud of it and I'm happy the way it came in. So uh, anyway, this video is going to be quite a bit different from anything you've probably seen on YouTube. Uh, it's different from anything that I've ever done and uh, I, I hope it makes you think at the end. I'm trying to stir up some emotions, maybe some thoughts, maybe push you a little bit as far as your thinking process going into this year's hunting season. So the question I'm going to throw out to you guys is what is your max distance? And this could be anything from a longbow to a 338 Lapua anything in there. I know we talk uh, on this channel exclusively about handgun hunting, but it pl applies to everything. What is your max distance? And I think what a lot of guys do is they go out at uh, a given distance. A lot of times it's going to be 50 yards or 100 yards, uh, depending on what the gun is. They're going to... I've got helicopters coming. <laughs> cool. That's a little bit of a distraction. Anyway, uh, they're going to go out at a set distance, uh, 50 or 100 yards, shoot it, see what happens, move their scope around, and... It's not the medevac chopper this time. Uh, they're gonna move their scope around and get it dialed in, and that's gonna be it. And from there on, they're just going to guess Anything farther than that may be a holdover situation. So I'm going to give you some situations here, and I want you to kind of go off into a deep thought process, kind of like if you were reading a book of fiction where you give those characters, uh, if there's a guy named Jim, he's going to have a, a look to him. Even though you've never seen his picture, he's going to have an attitude. You probably know whether he's fat or skinny, tall or short. Uh, handsome or not, just by the way the author portrays him in the uh, in the book, whether he's friendly or not, uh, outgoing, whatever. All these character traits that a person could have, if the author does a good job, you're going to get that from the book, and it's going to be hard to put down if it's a really good book. And I want you to kind of get into that mode when we're talking about the things that I'm going to talk about today. So you, you've got your gun, and I'm going to give you, we're just going to deal with this one for now. It's the Red Betty. You guys have seen this many times before if you watch my videos. It's a 44 Magnum Ruber, uh, Ruger Super Red Hawk Bisley Hunter. Okay, now that I got that out of the way. And I have this gun, just personally for me, it's sighted in at 50 yards. And I, I do that because... I can see the bullets when they hit through the scope. It's easy for me to walk up to the target. So I like shooting at 50 yards, and I know what I need to do to sight it in at 100 yards, how I need to move the scope. So let's just say, for you guys or everybody, this gun is sighted in at 100 yards. You guys may have seen this specific target before, but let's just say at 100 yards, this is the group that I have. I think this is a... What, a two or three inch dot that's got to be two a two inch dot and so we're got we have about a three inch group there and that's where we're at at a hundred yards and now now I want you guys I want you guys to kind of go into that mode of your hunting and it's a nice crisp clear morning and all once a doe shows up at 150 yards and you haven't practiced at that distance. And you may or may not have looked at a ballistic chart, but are you going to believe what's on that ballistic chart? Uh, even if you've chronographed your gun, you know how fast everything is, you've typed all that in, do you believe that chart if you haven't actually shot at 150 yards? And, and for me, the answer is no. I use ballistic charts as kind of a, a reference to see where things may be. But if I really want to know, I don't use a chronograph and then type all that stuff in and here's what it's going to be at a certain distance. I actually have to go do it with my gun and my ability and everything else.
Hey, thanks for giving me a few seconds to interrupt this video to talk about the Trifecta Handgun Rest. I've been designing and developing this rest since 2010, making improvements over that whole time. I think what we have today is the finest handgun rest for hunting you can buy. Here is a 10 second look. If you're interested, we have two models to choose from. Link is in the description below, or you can just go to trifectahandgun.com. So a doe shows up, you're dialed in at 100 yards, a doe shows up at 150 yards, what are you going to do? And you're willing to shoot does, right? It's uh, meat for the freezer. But uh, this doe may be in some uh, rather tight cover. If you take that shot, you may not know exactly where she was standing. Now you're going to go out there, you're going to walk all over the place trying to find uh, blood so you can find out whether you hit it or not and then obviously take up the blood trail. You're going to screw up your hunting area if you shoot this doe. Um, so there's no chance today for a, a buck to come along unless somebody pushes it from some distance away. Uh, but anyway, it's probably screwed up. So you decide to pass on that doe and I think a lot of us would do that. But I'm going to give you another scenario now, and I want you guys to think about this. A buck shows up at that same distance, 150 yards. He has main beams the size of the end of a baseball bat coming out of his antlers. He looks to be every bit of 30 to 36 inches wide, just a massive deer. Um, all his G2s, 3s, 4s are probably 13 to 15 inches. Everything's beautiful and symmetrical. He's got this beautiful one drop tine coming off of his side. He's standing out there and all once he turns in, he comes out and the sun is hitting him just perfect. So you can see that brown body against uh, a different color of vegetation, maybe a, a black uh, background if we're standing at the end of a, at the edge of a woods. Or, uh, or what have you, but you can just see his body perfectly and he's just turned broadside to you, just slightly quartering away. What would you do? Uh, you don't know what's gonna go on at 150 yards, right? So are you gonna just put the gun on his back, on the top of his back and hope it drops in? Something I really want you guys to put a lot of thought into. Put yourself into this actual hunt now. It's a nice, cold, crisp morning. You've been sitting there for maybe an hour or so, and this is what happens in front of you. This deer is probably gonna be the biggest deer you ever see in your life. It may be the biggest one taken in that county this year, probably one of the top 10 in the state, maybe an all-time state record. Uh, maybe you're going to be on the cover of magazines, local newspaper, you're going to be on podcast. Uh, you're going to be the man if you take this shot and you make this and you make it happen and you take this deer. But what happens if you shoot and make a much less than perfect shot? Maybe uh, low in the guts, maybe shoot a leg. Maybe shoot this deer in the neck, maybe shoot it in the jaw where it can no longer eat. Uh, that's the downside, right? So you put your gun on your rest. You can put the crosshairs right where you want. You can sit still, but you don't know exactly what's gonna happen with that bullet. Now I'm gonna guess most guys on forums, on Facebook groups, if I gave them this scenario would say, I have to pass because that's what looks good on there, right? That's the ethical thing to say, but you're by yourself. You have to make this decision. You can be the hero and maybe bring this deer down or you're gonna have to live with the rest of your life that a potential state, potential national Boone and Crockett type record 
went off and died a miserable death and nobody ever found him. So let's go to something a little bit more fun. Uh, let's take our scenario with this volleyball. It's uh, volleyball's uh, just over eight inches. So we're gonna pretend this is the size of the kill zone, which I think in most cases it probably is in most animals. And I'm gonna give you a scenario, same thing. I'm going to give you a dollar for every yard you set this volleyball away from you. So if you set it at 100 yards and you hit it, I give you 100 bucks. If you miss, you get nothing. How far away are you gonna put this ball? It's just a dollar. Not the end of the world if you miss. Are you gonna go out to 150 yards, take that chance? Where are you gonna aim on the ball? On the orange dot, above it, somewhere up here. Hope it drops in. Things to think about, right? Um, if you haven't taken that 150 yard shot, you really don't know what's gonna happen. How, how fast is that bullet going to be going and how much is it going to spread out. Uh, you don't know that, do you? Even though you may have had a three inch group at 100 yards, now you don't know with the volleyball, but it's only 100, 100 bucks or 150 bucks, so I would probably be willing to take that shot just because I like a challenge. If I miss, it's not the end of the world. So let's, let's raise the money up. I'm gonna give you 100 bucks. Obviously, this is pretend because I don't have this kind of money to give to you, but a hundred bucks for every yard. Now what are you gonna do? I just added two zeros onto that, right? So if you make that hundred yard shot, you get ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. That's a lot of money, right? $150,000 or nothing. And uh, I don't know about you, but 150 grand is a lot of money to me, but 100 grand is a lot of money to me. I know I can probably take the 100. Are you gonna go for the 150? How far away are you gonna set this ball? And I think a lot of guys don't wanna think about this whole scenario, right? Because that is not comfortable. Putting that big of a deer out of your range is not comfortable. Putting that kind of money where you may not get it is not comfortable. Some guys are, are if you're financially very well off, where that money may not be that much to you, you're gonna go for it. You're gonna take the pride, right? The 150 grand. But most of us, I think, are gonna take the 100 hundred thousand dollars I know I would so I hope you guys got some value out of this I know it was kind of a long video and uh, I just wanted to get that out there I've been thinking about this for a long time uh, for me personally I'll just tell you my thought on this is if I am in a situation where I can see more than a hundred yards and that's where I'm dialed in at that's where i'm comfortable at that's where i've taken shots at if i can see more than 100 yards i'm going to step up to a different gun and i realize that a lot of you guys have one handgun to hunt with which is fine but you either have to do one of two things right you have to stretch that limit and find out where you can no longer hit the volleyball consistently anymore and I mean consistently every shot goes into it not four out of five or you have to put yourself in a scenario where you can't see more than a hundred yards in a lot of my areas that's the max I can see because I like to hunt fairly tight cover um, anyway one of those two or you're going to have to give yourself discipline to not take that shot right a, a state record, 36, 30 inch wide buck, whatever it is, 
15 inch uh, G2s, 3s, maybe the brow tines are 7 and 8 inches long. Beautiful symmetrical rack, drop tine coming off of it. It's giving you the perfect angle. It's standing there still. What are you going to do?